when, when I discovered photography for me, I, I went out early in the morning. And I stayed out on the street all day. And then I would go to Times Square at night because the light was so bright in Times Square that you could photograph at night. So I, I, I was bitten by this in such a passionate way that I needed to spend as much time as possible. And my, my compatriot was Tony Ray Jones. So we were two young guys. I was 24, Tony I think was 22. And <clears throat> we just wanted to be out as much as possible. And then later, within a year, I became friendly with Gary Winogrand. And I think Tony then went back to England. So Gary was my, we were friends. And, and Gary was a nervous wreck of a guy in, in a wonderful way. And he needed to be out out of that house early in the morning, and I would get a call from him around 7.30, meet me at the Greasy Spoon, you know, and we'd meet up on 96th Street, we'd have coffee and a Danish, and then we'd start walking, and we just walked all day long, up and down Fifth Avenue, through Central Park, through the zoo, over to Times Square, back up onto Fifth Avenue, back and around the plaza, back down, and it was, it was, as if we were fishermen in the stream of Fifth Avenue, and we were just looking at all the specimens that came up and said, oh, whoa, whoa, that's beautiful. Another day, back in. And we were sifting the, the information, the human information that flows on the street. And you know, New York is really different than most cities, because older cities, like London or Paris, were built out of smaller little communities, right? That towns that ultimately grew together. So there's a different kind of circularity there. New York was designed as a grid extremely early on. I think maybe in the late 1700s, and so or, or, or earlier. And so the grid allows streets to run for miles straight ahead. And so the energy on the street is funneled this way. And when you participate in that, you become part of the energetic dimension of life on the streets. You flow with it and you feel that dynamic. It's a very different, it's a modern experience. You know, whereas Europe is, is um, circular with surprises as it opens up into plazas or piazzas. New York is like that. And so you could, it's never the same. You could walk Fifth Avenue all day and it will never be the same. The lights changing, the crowds change, going to work crowds, between lunch and breakfast crowds, you know, after lunch crowds, after work crowds. You get a different um, selection of the, the animal life in that, in that canyon. And, uh, it never ceased to amaze us. And so I, 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 I can just tell you, day after day after day, no holidays, every day was a holiday, the street called. And basically, the innocent kid that I was learned about life, human behavior life, by being on the street and, and observing that People will do the same things again and again. There's a way that we all have of mimicking our responses to things so that we, we, we become socialized. Everybody stops at the corner, looks both ways, then they dart into the street. You can anticipate that these things will happen. And sometimes they will even repeat themselves. So if somebody does a gesture and you miss it, you think to yourself, if I, if I follow that guy, he's going to do that again. And he does it again, just like that. You say, oh, I knew it. And, and it's that sense. And Gary and I and Todd Papa George, we used to talk about the kind of sixth sense that you develop as a street photographer about what people are going to do. And you often test it to prove to yourself that you are actually predictive in some way. Not 100%, but in the times that it's crucial, 
It usually pans out. And, and although it may sound a little mystical, it's not. If you practice the game, just like an athlete, you know that certain conditions are going to happen again and again and again, and you're going to call up your reserves in those moments. And street photography is no less athletic than any other sport.